Greetings and salutations, Geo Nerds. Today's program is brought to you by the letters C, B, and D. We built this city on rock and rock. This week, we'll look at the rocks under Brisbane CBD, how old they are, and their part in the history of our city. We'll also have a look at the very stone the buildings are made from. We'll visit some of the local quarries that it all came from. It'll be a blast. So you know what I'm gonna say. Let's rock. Nearly all of Brisbane's CBD is built on shales and siltstones from the Narran Lee Fernvale Formation, with a little bit of tuff towards the valley, and there is some alluvian soils, gravels and sands uh, around the river and in the creek beds. When John Oxley first sailed, or probably rode actually, up the Brisbane River with the castaway convicts in tow, he noted the stone in the Kangaroo Point area this turned out to be a fine building stone, tuff, or welded ignimbrite, or if you're a stonemason, porphyry. Although this is not correct, it is not porphyry. This is strong stuff. The cement in your driveway is probably around 10 megapascals in strength, if you're lucky. This stuff is 100 to 150 megapascals in strength. So tunnelling through it by hand was not really a thing to do even with free convict slave labour. So what stone is used in Brisbane CBD? Well, the short answer is lots. And a more dedicated person than T-Rox will have to do that video. So we'll try and focus on the rocks that came from, you know, around here, mostly. Granite. Anogra granite is pretty much the only granite in Brisbane. Sanford has granite diorite, and so does Mount Sampson. All are very different, as they come from very different rock formations. Anogra granite is a nice looking stone, until it weathers. It can, and usually does, contain pyrite inclusions. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I said pyrite, you idiot. This is iron pyrite which is the mineral iron sulphide, you know, fool's gold. When iron sulphide minerals are exposed to the atmosphere and water, the water becomes acidic. You know, the city is already like that anyway. On contact with water, it undergoes a weathering that liberates iron oxide. This leaves brown run marks on the stone at worst, and it expands in the process and can damage the stone. So it's not used in building material much. Gardens, ornaments, aggregate for concrete, no problem, but not to actually build with. The Camp Mountain Granodiorite. This stuff is fantastic. It looks great and it is a world-class building stone. It's a beautiful salt and pepper speckle. It's definitely the pick of all the Sanford granites and granodiorites, uh, but it's no longer mined. Uh, later on I'll take you on a fly through the old uh, quarry and how to get to it if you want to go and have a look where it was mined. The Mount Sampson Granodiorite. This stuff is also fantastic. It looks great. World class building stone. Lots of colours from black and white speckle through to pinks and greys. It's just an amazing, wonderful stone. Again, unfortunately, no longer mined. But if you want to see some, up around Cobble Creek or over to Cedar Creek up there, just have a wander around in the creek bed, you'll find plenty of it lying around there. Grey Mare Granodiorite. This was a deposit west of Warwick, a first class stone used in a lot of buildings in Brisbane, extensively at UQ. You will see it, it's a beautiful light stone with black speckle in it. Sibella Granite. This stuff is from up Mount Isaway. It's been used in the entire Queen Street Mall. It's a great stone. I just don't like it. It's not really granite. Marketing people in charge again. What could go wrong? It's actually a nice. Metamorphic, definitely not granite. But it is probably metamorphosed granite, so like all good bullshit, it has an element of truth. The Helidon Sandstones. This stuff is also everywhere. It's from up Halladon Way, towards Toowoomba. 
It's a wonderful stone. If you like sandstone, UQ have a mountain of it there. It's also used in Vic barracks and is trim in lots of churches and buildings all through Brisbane. The Mount Cutha Schist. This is a hornfeld where the bunya phyllite was squashed up against the Inogra granite and got cooked. This is a black hard rock with quartz foliations to varying degrees. It is absolutely everywhere. It's not really used in buildings, but it's in every retaining wall on every road. You'll just see this stuff everywhere. It's Coronation Drive, for instance, those black walls there, all of the black walls in town, it's just all Mount Cutha schist. There is a greener version of this, but it comes from up Caboolture Way somewhere and it's just not a Brisbane rock, but it's pretty and it's got lots of nice white stripes in it. If you want to see the green stuff, it's used in the scree field on the side of the uh, inner city bypass. Local sandstones from, well, the Aspie Formation has some reasonable sandstones in it. It's been quarried for building stone, notably at Albion uh, and Breakfast Creek. Uh, there's also some reasonable sandstone come, came from Goodna. It's not as good as the best of the Halliton stone, however, and it's not quarried anymore. Toof, rhymes with woof. I left the best till last. I love this stuff. It's everywhere in Brisbane. Quarried at Kangaroo Point, Petrie Bight, Spring Hill, Windsor, Lutwich, Stafford and more. Most of the curbstones in the Brisbane CBD are made of this stuff. Lots of churches, heaps of retaining walls and fences. It varies in quality. The best of it is a world-class building stone, you know, 150 megapascal stuff. The cheaper stuff is not much better than low-grade sandstone, so it's used as aggregate in a lot of concrete in Brisbane, and you'll see it. The concrete has got pink flecks in it. It looks a bit like Rocky Road when it gets old. I'll do an entire episode on this rock, so stay tuned. Hey GI nerds, here we are, just a quick fly-through for Brisbane stone. So what we're coming into here is the old Capera granite quarry. It's now got an old people's homes in it. You can see that next to it there's an active quarry which is no longer there in fact. There's the Capera shopping centre, Bunnings is now on that pad behind it. That's all being redeveloped. There's a quick flash of the uh, Ferny Hills quarry. We're just whipping over Settlement Road there. That's another granite quarry right there which is no longer active but it still stores some stone there. We're just going to whip over Ferny Hills. There's that beautiful big Ferny Hills quarry. It's a massive quarry through Fernie Hills and we're going over to Sanford and we're just going to stop right here. That intersection there is actually where the old uh, railway station used to be and that road is the old spur line that went to here. This patch of forestry you can see is the Sanford Environmental Research Station run by QUT, another fine institute that T-Rox attended in his university days. Well, day really, but anyway, let's not go there. This was the quarry. So you can see the um, undulations have all been filled in by trees now, but this was the quarry where the absolutely amazing Camp Mountain granite diorite was quarried and uh, it's just completely overlooked nowadays. We're just going to go over here a little bit because there's something of other significance here. This is the Samford Bora Ring. This is a site of Aboriginal significance. Young Aboriginals came here and they were initialised, initiated, into a manhood here and uh, yeah this has been here for many many thousands of years it's 26 meters round there's actually a little uh, pathway which heads off to the uh, left goes to the small ring and they processioned up to here and they became men so uh, yeah now this is the, the story of the Selena granite we talked about in the Queen Street Mall. It comes from up Mount Isa way and what we're seeing here is we're just doing a satellite drop in on Mount Isa to give you a bit of perspective of where it comes from. It's a small quarry but it produces a, a, an amazing stone which I don't particularly like, I've said that before but hey, it's a stone. I like it because it's a stone. So here's Mount Isa with the massive big mine there digging out copper, lead, zinc ore and just been there for a very very long time so this uh, quarry is just to the south of Mount Isa not too far we're just going to fly over there and uh, if you blink you'll miss it it is a very small quarry and there's not much to see especially on a satellite view that's I would say probably eight or nine years old so there it is there that's 
where the, all of that rock in the Queen Street Mall comes from, that one little quarry. You can see where they've worked it over and over and over, and it looks like there's plenty more of it there. So, you know, don't think we're going to run out of it soon. Anyway, T-Rock's out. Okay, Geo Nerds, that's your lot again this week. Next week, we're going to look at a coal mine. Queensland and Brisbane's first coal mine, right in the middle of Brisbane, over at Nunda. And the geology over there, it's pretty interesting. Aspley Formation, First Free Settlers, Kedron Brook, etc, etc. Anyway, I'll see you then. And remember, if you're going to do a degree in both geology and mathematics, don't get caught doing crystal math. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, then hey, you made it this far. Please help us to poke the algorithm and smash that like button like it's Space 1999. And if you want to see more, subscribe and share this with, say, a thousand of your closest friends. And let's see just how far that little algorithm can go before its CPU explodes. Cop you later.